The people of God were stuck. For centuries, they lived as slaves to terrifying taskmasters whose cruelty was only exceeded by their power. In these dark days, God's people gave birth to children who would inherit nothing more than misery. Their strongest ally was a God whom they had assumed had forgotten them. Far from forgotten, the people of God were rescued by the might of his hand. He put their masters to open shame and led them into the wilderness. Though they were set free, they weren't yet living free. They started to live as slaves to their own sin. What happened next reverberates for over 3,000 years of history to this current day. Like a loving and patient father, God instructed his children, giving them the Ten Commandments. Somebody say the Ten Commandments. Do you ever just want that guy's voice? I don't know if I said that last time. You just hear him and he sounds so like majestic and, and it's just the Ten Commandments. It's just me. Awkward. <clears throat> the Ten Commandments. So this is what we've been talking about. This is week number, anybody know? Week number five. We've covered a couple commandments so far. Anybody know what commandment number five is? Anybody else not hear that on this side? Let's all say it together. I'll count to three and then we'll start. We'll do it in unison. Ready? One, two, three. Honor thy father and thy mother. And we read this scripture if we turn to Exodus chapter 20, verse 12. Exodus chapter 20 where we find all of the Ten Commandments. And it says this, Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. And this commandment, number five, the fifth commandment, honor thy father and and thy mother, is actually where we see a bit of a shift in these Ten Commandments. Um, if you haven't seen it before, and if you haven't noticed this layout, when we talk about the Ten Commandments, it can be broken down into two sections. The first four commandments are all about what? Does anybody know? Anybody want to guess? Anybody heard this before? I'll help you out. The first four commandments that we have already looked at are all about God and serving God. But the next six commandments, starting with number five tonight, are all about people. And so, honoring thy father and thy mother is the one that kicks us off. We talk about stealing and killing and committing adultery. These are all sins that we can commit against people. So, if you're taking notes tonight, the first four commandments are about God and living for God. And the next six commandments that we're going to be looking at, starting with tonight, are all about how we serve people, how we interact with people, how we treat people. Uh, Matthew chapter 22, it says this. A lawyer was asking Jesus, he said, what is the greatest commandment? Matthew chapter 22, verse 37 to 40. If you have your Bible, you can turn there. So here's this lawyer, he says, Jesus, you know, out of all the commandments, out of all the things that you've taught, out of all the things that we know, what is the greatest commandment? And so Jesus, Matthew chapter 22, verse 37 to 40 says this, Jesus said unto him, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. It's very similar. It says, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And then it goes on to say this phrase, okay? It says, On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. And so what this uh, portion in Matthew chapter 22 is, is talking about is what we just said. Um, on these two commandments, you can actually fit all of the ten into just these two things. Number one, love God. Somebody say, love God. love God. Number two is love people. Somebody say, love people. love people. 
So Jesus said on these two commandments, you can actually pack all of the Ten Commandments and all of the laws that we are further given into this. If you love God, you're not going to want to commit adultery. You're not going to have another God because you love the one true living God, all these sorts of things. And then if you love people, you're not going to want to steal from people. You're not going to want to kill people. You're not going to want to do all those things that are wrongful to people. Make sense tonight? So we understand in these Ten Commandments, there's two sections. Number one, love God. Number two, love people. And so, with fur without further ado, we're going to start into commandment number five, honor thy father and thy mother. And so, first and foremost tonight, if you didn't know this, and I, I would really, really hope that you do, uh, but, but you are all someone's child. I know, it's mind-blowing, right? <gasps> we are all children of somebody. Now, each and every one of us in this room uh, might have a different family structure, might have a different upbringing, but by default, because you can breathe, because you're in this room tonight, you have a genetic father and mother. So you are all children. So that means that this fifth commandment applies to everyone. That, somebody say, that means me. It applies to everyone. Even though we've got, like I said, different family structures and upbringings, we are all a child of someone, therefore this is applicable to all of us. And I want you to notice, before we go any further, that with this commandment, there are no loopholes at all. There is no way to get out of obeying this commandment. It doesn't say, honor thy father and thy mother if, insert phrase here. It doesn't say you obey your parents and listen to your parents if, right? What it says is, honor thy father and thy mother, period. There is no way to get around this. There are no loopholes. It doesn't say honor your parents if they go to church. It doesn't say honor your parents if they live for God. It doesn't say honor your parents if they treat you right. It just says honor thy father and thy mother. There are no stipulations and there are no excuses to this commandment. It is just something that we must do. This is a commandment that we have to abide by. This is a commandment that we have to obey. There is no way to dishonor your parents and still be in the will of God. Honoring thy father and thy mother, no excuses. Somebody say no excuses. No excuses. Now, that being said, we're going to break down this commandment, and we need to understand what this word honor means, and we'll get into that into, in a minute. But Colossians chapter 3, verse 20 says this. Children, obey your parents in all things, for this is well-pleasing unto the Lord. Fathers, provoke not your children to anger, lest they be discouraged. That's Colossians chapter 3, verse 21. So this is what I want you to understand tonight, by default, okay? So if obeying your parents is pleasing to God, disobeying your parents is... Okay, let's try that again. If obeying your parents is pleasing to God, disobeying your parents is? Okay, we got wrong, sure. Displeasing was the word I was looking for. Let's all say it. Displeasing. How many of you want to please God? Anybody? We got a couple of stragglers that are kind of on the fence. You don't know. We'll pray for you after service. But really, and honestly, in your heart of hearts, even though we all sin and we all make mistakes, how many of you want to please God? And so, if we are not honoring our parents, we are doing a disservice and we are actually uh, making God displeased with our actions. Therefore, uh, it's pleasing when you obey your parents. Therefore, when you disobey them, it only, it, you know, even if it, it makes them angry or mad, it still displeases God. And I would say tonight, like I saw when you raise your hand, that we all want to please God. So, as we dive into this commandment of honoring our father and mother, we need to understand what this word honor means. Does anybody know or have a guess or have your, your personal definition of what honor means? Anybody? Obeying? That's all right. You're, that, I'm asking you to shut it out. Go ahead. Respecting? Anybody else? What words do you think of when you think of the word honor? 
you know, if there was a thesaurus in this room and you opened it, what word would you expect to be beside honor? Anybody? What's that? Love? Yeah, so we've got love, we've got respecting, we've got obeying, and these are all great words. But honor, I want you to grasp this tonight, and I don't want you to, to go too far with this immediate thought because we're going to build upon it. But honor does not directly mean that you have to obey your parents. Wow. There, I heard it. I heard it back here. I, heard, I thought I almost saw somebody do a little, whew. But when we talk about honoring our parents, this does not mean that we always have to obey them. And we're just going to leave it there for now, okay? Don't get too carried away. This is not like an excuse like, all right, yes, mother and father, I honor you, but I'm not going to clean my room, okay? That's not what this means. We're going to look further into it. We're going to get further understanding. But when we talk about honoring, honoring is just not obedience, okay? Uh, you can't just put the word obey into this commandment because it's not the fullness of what honor means. Obedience, yes, is part of honoring, but it is not the fullness. And for all intensive purposes tonight, when we talk about this word honor, uh, a really great definition or another word that we can use to, to uh, replace this word honor is respect. Somebody say respect. 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 Not necessarily obey, but respect. And so as we hop into the scripture tonight, let's, let's look at Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1 to 2. It says this. This is going back to this whole obedience thing, all right? Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1 to 2. It says, children, obey your parents in the Lord. Somebody say, in the Lord. For this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise. Now that word promise, we're going to go back. We're going to look at that. But here we are in Ephesians. So just in case that you're like, well, you know, maybe that honoring thy father and mother is just an Old Testament principle. No. Okay. We've got it right here. Ephesians chapter 6. Um, Obey your parents in the Lord. Honor thy father and thy mother. And so this is a, a great portion of scripture to look at when it comes to talking about obedience, when it comes to respecting, and when it comes to honoring our parents. Those three words, in the Lord, are three very important words that we need to understand from Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1. In the Lord. What this means is that if your parents ask you to do it, okay, if your parents ask you to clean your room, if your parents ask you to take the dog outside, if your parents ask you to mow the lawn, if your parents ask you to put away your phone at 9 o'clock at night, if your parents ask you these sort of things and God can back them up and God can put his stamp of approval on it, you need to obey it. Of course... Um, we don't read in the scripture that thou shalt put thine iPhone sixth away at 9 p.m. That's not what we read. But what I'm saying tonight is that if your parents are asking and requesting of you to do something and it does not directly violate and go against what the word of God says and what living a holy lifestyle means, you have to obey it. That's what respect is. That's what honor is. And that's where, yes, you do have to be obedient to your parents when they ask you to do these sorts of things. If they ask you to clean your room, you do it. If they ask you to be home for 9 p.m., you be there. If they tell you no, you listen. And remember, this commandment has no loopholes. It's not... Honor thy father and mother if you think their request is rational in your teenage mind. Okay? Everybody grasp this concept. If your parents ask you to do it and it does not violate what the word of God says or what it means to live a holy lifestyle, you have to obey. If they ask you to do anything that doesn't contradict the word of God, you need to do it. However... Okay, here's this turning point, and this is why these three words in the Lord are very important. And that's why honoring, this is why honoring doesn't fully mean to straight out obey everything that they ask you. Because 
Obeying your parents does not supersede or take priority over obeying God. Obeying what your parents tell you to do and obeying what God tells you to do. If these two things come into contradiction, who are you going to listen to? Any guesses? Why don't we all say it together? One, two, three. God. There we go. Okay? And so, yes, like I said, if your parents are asking you to do things, clean up around the house, whatever, you do have to obey them. Uh, but if what your parents are, are asking you to do goes against what the Word of God says, and if what your parents are asking of you or telling you or whatever goes against what the Word of God and living a holy lifestyle means, this is where this whole concept of obedience does not come into play. Because if you have to choose between obeying your parents and obeying God because they are going against each other and what they say, you have to pick God. And that's why when we talk about this word honor, the word respect is a great replacement because just because uh, if your parents are requesting something of you that goes against what the word of God says, you can say no and still be respectful. Mom, I love you. Dad, I love you. But, you know, because of what I believe and what my convictions are, I can't do that. And so that's why we use this word respect when we're talking about honor. And so, of course, if your parents ask you to go kill someone, okay, extreme example, you get home tonight, hey, how was youth group? Oh, mom, was really good. Right on. I need to go kill the guy across the street. His dog pooped on our lawn. Okay? Sounds silly. It is silly. If that happens to you, call me. I want to be there. Sounds like a funny time. More than likely, this is not going to happen, though. But just as an extreme example, this gives you the understanding that just because your parents ask you to do it doesn't mean you have to obey it if it goes against what God says. Somebody say amen. amen. If anything that your parents ask you to do contradicts what the Word of God says, you must respect them. But in times of, of this nature, you do not have to obey them. And this is the only time that you will hear me ever say that you should not obey your parents, okay? So after youth tonight, when your parents are, hey, I was served tonight. Oh, it's great. Alex told me I don't have to listen to you. That's not what I said, okay? I've got witnesses in the room tonight. If your parents are going against what the Word of God says in a holy lifestyle, you have the right to respectfully say no. And so... The more that I read and the more that I, I studied about this commandment, the more that I realized it's primarily based, primarily based around correction. Somebody say correction. If God felt that it was so important for honoring our parents to be part of the Ten Commandments, okay, we're talking about like the Ten Big Rules. If God thought that it was so important that it should be written on tables of stone, this tells me that there must have been an issue with children and, and kids and adolescents and teenagers and young adults not respecting their parents. And they did not heed to the correction of their parents. So, in order to fully understand this principle of honoring our father and mother, we have to look at correction. Somebody say correction. Anybody in here just love being corrected? Got a couple people that are weird. Just kidding. Got a couple people in the room tonight that are like, yeah, I love correction. But I would say uh, most of the time, how, uh, how about this? How many of you don't overly like being corrected? Okay. Now, how many of you don't like being corrected if it is done very poorly? Like if I'm talking like, you know, you go to spell your name on the chalkboard at school and they go, no, it's wrong. You're stupid. You don't know how to spell your own name. How many of you would love that correction? Yeah, soak it in. Nobody, right? But when correction is done in love, that's when it's kind of okay, right? It's like, you know, it's a good job. It was a nice try, but uh, you don't know how to spell your name. Let me help you, okay? That's where correction is kind of a good thing. But uh, correction, without further ado. Proverbs chapter 23, verse 13 to 14 says this. This is a good one. This is a really good one. I actually... Uh, 
I was watching a sermon about this, and uh, he pulled a scripture from Deuteronomy. I think it's Deuteronomy 23, 19 or something like that. And basically said, you know, if, if kids are disobedient to their parents, um, you take them outside of the city, you dig a big hole, and then you throw a boulder in on top of the hole to kill them. <clears throat> We're not going to talk about that one tonight. That's a funny one, though. Proverbs chapter 23, verse 13 to 14. Withhold not correction from the child. <laughs> if thou beatest him with the rod, he's not going to die. <laughs> chapter, or verse 14. Thou shalt beat him with the rod, and you shall deliver his soul from hell. <laughs> what this is talking about, this is talking about parents correcting children. And uh, it's saying, you know what, don't, don't be scared to correct your children. Now, there's very, very, very few people in the room tonight um, that are parents, and those of them that are have very young, young, young children. So I highly doubt they're, they're hitting their children with uh, rods yet. <laughs> I would hope not. Yeah. We'll talk later. <clears throat> but what this is talking about, okay, this is, this is talking about, you know, somebody our age, and they're disobeying their parents. And uh, what it's saying is, anybody ever get the wooden spoon or the belt? Anybody still in that, that era? Praise God. I was there. I got it hard. One time, my mother belted me, and uh, it was kind of at the end of this, uh, you know, belt hitting stage, and I was old enough that it didn't hurt anymore. And so I laughed at her, and, and it wasn't funny because then when my dad came home, I didn't laugh anymore because it, it really hurt that time. <laughs> Praise God. Back to the scripture. What this is talking about is saying, with no, withhold not correction from the child. So don't be, don't be scared to correct a child. If you hit him, if you beat him with the rod, he's not going to die, okay? So what this is saying, you know, a little slap on the wrist is not a bad thing. And what you're actually going to do if you give him that slap on the wrist or that, that hit of correction, you shall deliver his soul from hell. This sounds, you know, a little bit perplexing, a little bit confusing, but it's talking about correction bringing direction, Correction brings direction. Another scripture. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 11 to 12. My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, neither be weary of his correction. For whom the Lord loves, he corrects, even as a father, even, even as a father the son in whom he delights. And so what this is saying is that just because somebody corrects you does not mean that they don't love you. Just because, you know, when you were five or six or, or 15, 17, whatever you were, and your parents spanked you with a wooden spoon, you know, they weren't trying to inflict pain on you and be like, yeah, I'm the boss, right? They're not trying to make this sort of statement. What they're trying to do is, is put it in your brain that, you know, your, your brain is a funny thing. And your brain associates pain with bad. Anybody been there? When you think of pain, you think pain's a bad thing, right? So as a child, when your parents would spank you or whatever it was, your brain was like, oh, okay, I shouldn't do that because then I'll get spanked and that hurts, so that's bad, right? Everybody understand this principle? It makes sense, right? Okay, you know, yeah, it sucked. Been there, done it. But that's what it's all about. And so just because your parents correct you does not mean that they don't love you. It's actually the exact opposite of this. What the scripture is saying here, Proverbs chapter 3, it says, uh, don't be weary of the correction. The Lord actually loves who he corrects, just as a father loves the son in whom he delights. And so your parents don't correct you just because they want to, uh, you know, stand up on a podium in your household and be like, that's right, I'm the boss, I'm the mom, I'm the dad, I'm the captain of this house. That's not what they're doing. What they're doing is they're trying to keep you and protect you from the things that are around you and the things and the sin that you can fall into. And so... They correct you. Anybody ever been corrected by your parents before and in the moment it seemed crazy, but after a while you realize, you know what, they had a point. Anybody ever been there? I can recall times in my life where I was told not to go somewhere and it was a good thing that I didn't. Anybody ever had those kind of moments where it's like, I don't understand, mom and dad. Like, I don't understand what would be wrong with doing this. But then a year down the road, you look and you go, you know what? I'm glad that they told me. Just as the Lord loves, loves who he corrects, your parents do the same thing. They correct you because they love you. None of us like correction. When we think of being corrected, a lot of times you would think of a, a negative connotation associated with this word uh, and, and, and negativity and anger. 
which sometimes it is. Sometimes when you get corrected, it doesn't feel good, and you're angry, and you don't understand why. You don't understand why they're correcting you. But it's done. Correction when it is perfect, okay? Please understand me. When correction is being done right, it's done out of love. You can't be corrected in an improper manner. You can do something and, you know, somebody could totally uh, blow it out of proportion and correct you. And, and you go, whoa, like, all I did was write my name wrong on the chalkboard. Like, you don't have to give me detention, right? That would be blown out of proportion. But when correction is done right and properly and biblically, correction is to be done out of love, not hate and anger and frustration. And so here we have this parallel of God correcting someone because he loves them, just as a father corrects his child because he loves them, he wants the best for his child. Correction is meant to be done in love. But unfortunately, in today's society, when we talk about correction, correction is viewed as opposition. Anybody ever witnessed this before? You've seen somebody get corrected and they get offended? It's like, you don't correct me. You don't, you don't come against me. Anybody ever witnessed this before? Correction in this day and age is viewed as opposition. But really, it, this is far from the reality of what correction is supposed to be. Correction is not opposition. If you're taking notes, write this down. This is a great point. Correction is not opposition, but it is direction and it is protection. Okay? Correction is not opposition. When somebody corrects you, they are not opposing you if they do it right, if they do it biblically, if they do it in love. It's not opposition, but it is direction and protection. And when we read from Ephesians chapter 6, it actually alluded to this in verse 2 and 3. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise. Okay, there's that word with, with promise again. But this is why, okay, Here, here's the promise. That it may be well with thee, and that you may live long on the earth. So obey your parents, listen to your mom, listen to your dad, let them correct you, respect them, honor them, all of these things, because it's the first commandment with promise, and the promise is that if you do this, it will be well with you, and may live, you may live long on the earth. And like I said, parents don't correct us just because they want to be the boss. They correct us to protect us. Because, think of it like this, okay? It's a very uh, real-world example. Think about if your parents never, ever corrected you. And I'm not talking about at this age. I'm talking about from the time that you were born, your parents just never said no, okay? Think about this, okay? So, thank God we had parents that that corrected us and that we didn't have to learn everything the hard way. Thank God we didn't have to stick our hand into fire and burn our hand to realize that it's hot. Does this make sense? If you had to learn everything the hard way and if your parents never corrected you and you were just running around and sticking your hand into every fire you saw, you would quickly learn that that was an improper thing and then you'd probably look at your parents and be like, why didn't you tell me this would hurt? right? But that's what correction is. Thank goodness we didn't have to grab a knife and cut our hand on a sharp blade to realize that knives hurt. Thank goodness we didn't grab a handful of dog poop and eat it as a child for our parents to tell us that's gross. Somebody say amen. Maybe some of you didn't receive that correction. In Jesus' name, I pray for healing. But thank goodness that as children and as young people, we had correction as a child. Because if we didn't, we'd probably all be dead. If your parents didn't tell you that you had to hold your breath underwater, okay? If your parents didn't tell you these vital things, imagine you're going to driving school. I'm, just, I'm still laughing at that one. That was funny. Imagine you go to driving school, okay? You've got your driving instructor. You've never seen a car in your life. I was thinking of that Spongebob episode where he's like, Miss Pops in the pastor seat, and he's like, floor it. Anybody seen that one? Got a couple people laughing. But imagine with me, you hop in this car, and you're, and, and you're like, okay, tell me what to do. And they're like, go ahead. What do you mean, go ahead? Just put it in D and just go. No, 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 that's not how it works, right? They offer correction. 
No, don't, don't steer into that oncoming traffic. You might die. Okay? It sounds silly, but this is, this is real life principles of why correction is important. And so, yes, these are funny. And these are corrections that might happen as a child. I mean, if you're 16 and you're still trying to pick up dog poop and eat it, we will pray for you. Realistically speaking, you're probably not going to do that. So yes, these are funny. Yes, these are ways that we were corrected as children. But correction is different when you get older. Correction is not, no, no, Alex, don't pick up the sharp knife. Like, Alana doesn't have to do that at home, okay? You might cut yourself, Alex. Be careful. That's not how it works. I understand that. But correction, whether it's from my parents or grandparents or pastors, becomes a lot harder when you become of age. But when we, talk about, when we talk about this, parents correct us out of love. A parent wants the best for their child, and they want to see no harm come to them. A parent always wants the best for their child. And it is our responsibility as children to respect and to obey our parents. That is your responsibility. And I understand tonight, like I said, that we all come from different backgrounds. We all come from different homes and home situations and scenarios. And so what this uh, principle is talking about and what this commandment is talking about is, is honoring those that are the mother and father in your life. And so maybe you come from a broken home where you only have one or the other or your upbringing is a little bit different. This commandment still applies to those that are, that are the head of your household. And so, yes, it is our responsibility as children to respect and obey our parents. We have to do this. But God backs you up on this, okay? God just doesn't leave you hanging. You don't honor your father and mother. There's, there's no loopholes. There's no way around it. You've got to respect them at all times. Yes, this is true. But parents, and I know there's none in the room tonight, but your parents have a responsibility, okay? You don't, you don't need to go home and say, you know what, you have a responsibility, mom. But your parents have a responsibility in raising children. And it says this, Colossians chapter 3, verse 20 and 21. We read verse 20 already. 21 says this, Fathers, provoke not your children to anger, lest they be discouraged. Fathers, provoke not your children to anger, lest they be discouraged. Ephesians chapter 4. So we just read verses 1 to 3, okay? Ephesians chapter 1 to 3 is talking about us obeying them. But on the tail end of all of this, um, yes, you know, there's a promise that comes with it that you're going to live long upon the earth. But this is what Ephesians chapter 6 verse 4 says. It says, And you fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. And so what this is talking about is our parents have a responsibility as well. And there's none in the room tonight that can hear me uh, and hear this preaching. But your parents do have a responsibility. You, you do and you should earn their respect. Um, your parents have a responsibility to not, the, the two words that these verses use is anger and wrath, okay? Anger and wrath. Uh, you know, this is very negative. This is, you know, they're disciplining you because they're angry or they're coming at you because they're angry. And we just talked about how that's not the proper way and that's not the biblical way to correct. Now, because your parents are being firm or stern with you does not mean that they are angry, okay? I'm talking about like an outright uh, gesture and emotion of anger and wrath. Their job is to correct out of love, not out of anger and hate and displeasure for how you're acting. Now, that being said, this comes first full circle because you have a responsibility as a young person to honor and respect them at all times. So if your lack of honor and if you're disrespecting your parents, of course they're going to get angry and mad. Of course they're going to be upset. But you have a responsibility to respect them and they have a responsibility to correct you out of love. We read this, Proverbs chapter 3, verse 11 to 12. It says, My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, neither be weary of his correction. For whom the Lord loves, he correct, even as a father in, in the son who he delighteth. Okay? It's done out of love. 
Somebody say love. And how many of you in the room tonight can honestly say that, that you've been at one point in your life uh, corrected and it was very uh, anger driven and you were corrected and you just, you, there was no love in it at all. Anybody ever been there? I've been there. Whether it's school or sports or a teacher, whatever it is, you've been corrected and you're like, whoa, okay? And it didn't feel good, did it? But how many of you have been corrected out of love and it was done in a, in a loving, nurturing way and, and you received it well? Anybody been there? You know, I, I know you want to go there. I know you want to do that, but I'm telling you, you really should. And I'm telling you this because I love you, right? Those are times where you need to listen, and that's where it's easier to receive correction. Somebody say correction. But this tonight is, is where the rubber meets the road, so to speak, because this is what I know. This is what you know. It's easy to, easy to love someone who loves back. And it's easy to respect and honor someone who rightfully deserves it. You don't have a hard time honoring and respecting somebody when, when, they, when they deserve it. You don't have a hard time loving somebody when they love you. We understand this tonight. But this is what makes this commandment challenging because like I said in order for this to be put into the Ten Commandments obviously there was a problem with children not honoring and respecting their parents but on the reciprocating end of all of this this commandment becomes exceedingly hard when you feel like your parents do not honor and respect you and I know that this might be a little bit touchy and this might nudge you the wrong way because it hits at home where we live our own personal lives. But I want to talk about this tonight. I think it would do us a, a disservice and a discredit to you and to this message and to the Word of God if we don't talk about this. Yes, you have a responsibility in all things to respect your parents, okay? We all understand this. You must always, always, always honor and respect we talked that, about that if what they're saying goes against the word of God, you don't have to obey. But on the reciprocating end of all of this is what if you feel like the person that you are supposed to honor and respect, your mother or your father, both or whoever has raised you, what if you feel like they don't deserve respect? What if how they treat you and how they interact and how they respond to you is not done in this loving, correcting way. What if? Because I'm sure that there are some people in this room tonight, we can come back to the music, I don't know how long I've been, but that's all right. I am sure that there are some people in this room tonight that you might not respect your mother and father or one of the other because they don't do anything to deserve it. And this is where this commandment becomes very difficult. Because like I said, and I don't, I don't want to repeat myself, but when somebody loves you and when somebody respects you and they honor you and they treat you right, it's very easy to do the same. Can you agree with that? Somebody loves you. When you know that somebody would do anything for you, you would do anything for them. You would go up to bat for them any day. But what about the situations and the family scenarios where Love is not being transmitted to you. What if you feel as a young person that you're not being respected and treated right? Therefore, it becomes exceedingly hard to honor and respect your parents. And I'm not talking about you being irrational. I'm not talking about you flying off the cuff because your parents told you to do your homework and, and you go, oh, you don't respect me. That's not, that's not what I'm talking about. I am talking about a legitimate case, okay? I'm talking about a legitimate scenario where your parents do not interact with you in love. There's no honor and there's no respect flowing from them to you. And so you find it hard for respect to flow from you to them because they are not doing that as your main influences in life. The people who raised you, the person, the mother, the father that raised you, and you don't feel that. 
And I, like I said, I'm not talking about because you're, you're closed off. I'm talking about you have a legitimate case to make that they don't honor and respect you. This is where this commandment becomes very hard. And I know it might be awkward to talk about, but this is a real life scenario. And this is a real life situation that we face. They never showed you love. They never showed you respect. They never showed you honor. And they provoked you to wrath. All they ever did was show anger and hate, and it makes you angry. Yes, the Bible said for fathers and and mothers and parents not to do that, but they did it. So now what are you going to do? What are you going to do about it? They talk negatively, and they talk down to you. Maybe they call you names. Maybe they treat you improperly. And they show no love. What do you do? Because that's a hard scenario. And I know that this does not go out to everybody. And I hope that this would not go out to everybody in the room. But I guarantee you that there are people in this room that probably struggle with that. And it would be a disservice if we didn't talk about it. Because this is where this commandment becomes a real struggle. And I also know that there are people in the room tonight who come from a broken home and you only live with one of your parents for whatever reason. There's multiple reasons why. But maybe you don't live with both of your parents or maybe you don't know your mother or your father or vice versa or whatever it is. Or maybe you watched your parents fight. There was no love there, okay? Maybe you watched your parents fight or, or God forbid, maybe one of them was abusive or you saw your parents get a divorce, okay? I, I, I feel willing to speak here because I've been there, okay? I come from a separated home. My parents aren't together. I've been there. I've done it. I've lived it. I know what it's like. And if you think that you're in the room tonight and you're alone, you're not. There are people that you can talk to. There are people that will listen to you. There are people that have gone through the same th- thing that want to help you because they understand how difficult it is. But this is the reality of our world because the world, because of this whole idea of correction, the world is is fight and flight, okay? The world is, as soon as I receive opposition, I'm just, no, I'm gonna gonna get away from this. I, I don't need this. I don't need this opposition. That's the world that we live in. That's why divorce rates are 50%. It's an attack of the enemy to destroy our homes to eliminate the mother figure or the father figure from the household. It's an attack of the enemy. Or maybe this is the scenario tonight. So we've talked about you not receiving love and respect or or coming from a home that's broken or not knowing your parents or watching them fight or abusive and divorce. But I'm sure that there's somebody in the room tonight that your parents don't live for God touchy subject but I didn't want to beat around this subject and try to avoid this part of of this commandment your parents don't live for God or or maybe you've got a, a father or mother or the person who raises you God forbid might be an alcoholic or abuses drug substances or they live a lifestyle that you don't agree with and you find it hard to honor and to respect them What do you do then? Because like I said, this is where this commandment really comes into play. What do you do when they don't do anything to deserve the honor and the respect? What if you can't agree with the lifestyle that they live? What do you do? Exodus chapter 20 verse 12 said it a couple times already honor thy father and thy mother no loopholes no excuses no exceptions no way around it you have to respect your parents no matter what and I know for some of you in the room tonight this might be a challenge you find it hard to respect your parents because you watch them go through a divorce or you find it hard to respect one of your parents because one of them maybe wasn't a majority contributor in your life And it's hard. But this commandment says to honor and respect your parents. The the commandment is not conditional. 
period. And so, yes, it's hard. And maybe in this room tonight, that's you, and you struggle with this. How do I transmit love and honor and respect to somebody who maybe I feel like does not rightfully deserve it? And the core of this issue is that some of you need to forgive. Some of you need to forgive because this is the highest form of honor and respect. When you forgive, you're telling somebody, you know what, I respect you and, and I know that you messed up, but, but I forgive you because you're my mother, because you're my father, because you're my friend. Whatever it is, the core of this issue for someone in this room tonight is that you need to forgive. 1 John chapter 4, verse 20 says this. If a man says, I love God, and he hates his brother, he's a liar. Strong talk. For he that loveth not his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God who he has not seen? We can all stand tonight. If a man says, I love God, how many of you in this room tonight will put your hand up and say, I love God? If you say that, but you have hate and disrespect and dishonor against your brother, you are a liar. And so the core of this issue tonight for some people is that you have unforgiveness in your life about life circumstances, and you need to come clean for that. Is it fair? No. Is how you were treated fair? No. Is life fair? No. But this is what the commandment says. And so in this scripture in 1 John chapter 4, when it's talking about loving your brother, it's not just a literal sense. Okay, that doesn't mean that this is just a brother-to-brother -brother relationship. But when we talk about a brother-to-brother -brother relationship, and if you were here for one of the services during Summer Summit, uh, Brother Graham talked about it, is that in the Bible, the brother-to-brother -brother relationship is one of the strongest relationships that we can see. And so what it is talking about here is, is if you can't forgive those who are closest to you, those that are around you, if you say you love God but you hate them, you're lying. And how can you love God who you don't even see if you don't love and forgive those around you? Those that did you wrong. Those that didn't earn your honor and respect. You have unforgiveness in your heart and you need to get that out. Matthew chapter 6 verse 14 to 15 says this. This is my closing scripture. For if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. Great promise. But if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your for Father forgive your trespasses. It is impossible to get to heaven without being forgiven. And what I mean by this is that if God does not forgive you of your sins through repentance, you won't get there. And so we understand how vital and how important forgiveness is. Somebody say forgiveness. So this commandment, to summarize it very briefly, honor thy father and thy mother. Is it hard sometimes? Yes. But you have to remember in the room tonight the couple scenarios that I mentioned. If you've got parents that love you and they correct you, it's not opposition. It's protection and direction, okay? They're looking out for your best interest, whether at this moment and this uh, stage of your life you realize it or not. They're looking out for you. And for those of you on the other end that you don't feel that correction done in love and you don't feel that honor and, and respect, I would encourage you tonight, whether it's here at this altar or whether it's at home in your personal prayer life, if you have unforgiveness in your life against one of your parents, if you have unforgiveness in your life against your mother or your father because of something that they legitimately did wrong, I encourage you, talk to God about it and forgive them because you're only holding yourself back. And you cannot truly honor your father and mother if you have unforgiveness in your heart towards them. 
I know the end of this has maybe been a little heavy and a little touchy to some people in this room. I, I, I wish you'd just close your eyes tonight. And uh, we're just going to pray. And I think we'll probably come up to the front. But would you just pray with me in whatever way you're comfortable? Ask this word to minister to you right now. I'm going to pray out loud, but I want you to pray, all right? Jesus, God, I'm so thankful for your word tonight. God, I'm so thankful for these 10 commandments that you gave us to live by and to abide by. And God, I felt so strongly when I was studying for this that there were people in this room tonight that struggled with honoring their father and their mother because of the circumstances that life or their parents brought upon them. God, it might not have been fair. God, it might not have been easy for them. But God, I pray in this room tonight that if there was a young person that has unforgiveness in their heart towards their mother or their father, or someone is struggling to show their parents honor and respect because they don't feel that reciprocated their way. God, I pray that you would help us tonight. I wish you that you would just elevate the volume in this place a little bit. God's going to minister through his word right now. God, I pray for every young person under the sound of my voice right now. God, I pray right now in this moment, God, not something I talked about tonight, something I wanted to, but God, I pray that you would be a heavenly father to somebody in this room tonight. God, when they feel that like they've got nobody else to turn to, God, for somebody in this room that, that feels that way, that they don't have anybody to talk to, God, when they feel like they don't have a father or a mother to reach out to, God, I pray right now in this service, you would make yourself known to somebody as their heavenly father. God, we have somebody we can turn to when life becomes difficult. God, when the road gets rough, you are a heavenly father. God, when we don't have a physical father or a physical mother to turn to, you are always there to help us. Jesus, 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 why don't we all make our way to this altar tonight? Singers can come. That's all right. Come on up. But you don't have to stop praying. Why don't we just tap right back into where we were? I think we're in a good spot. The Spirit of God wants to move and, and the Spirit of God wants to speak to somebody. I wish you would lay your hand on your neighbor, actually. Because you don't know what your brother or sister in the Lord is going through. You don't know what their home life might be like. And why don't we bind together? Why don't we lift our voices and pray? Jesus. God, I'm asking that you would minister through your word tonight in this place. God, I pray that you would minister through what the scripture has to tell us tonight. That's all right. Don't be uncomfortable to lift up your voice and to talk to God. God, I pray that you would help us to live this commandment out on a daily basis. God, we understand that you put parents in our life to protect us and to direct us. So God, I pray tonight that each and every young person under the sound of my voice would heed to the voice of their parents or heed to the voice of the head of their household, whoever that might be, God, whatever position in their family that might be. God, I pray that each and every young person in this place would have a new level of respect, a new level of love and a new level of honor towards their parents tonight. And God, like we already prayed, I pray that you would be a heavenly father to somebody in this room tonight. Somebody who desperately needs you. God, I pray that you would make yourself known once again to them. God, for those of us that might have a, a father absent in our household or a mother absent in our household, God, you fill that void tonight. I pray it in Jesus' name. God, I pray that you would sweep in right now, God. You are our heavenly father that we can turn to. You are our heavenly father. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. 
Hallelujah. I worship you, Jesus. I worship you, Jesus. It seems like a very basic commandment. Honor thy father and thy mother. But it goes so far just beyond just a, a one-time action and just respecting and honoring. There is so much more to it than that. And I pray tonight in my prayer is that each and every one of us would get a hold of this and realize what our parents have done for us in raising us, in, protect, in protecting us, in directing our lives. They are a blessing. Somebody say a blessing. Amen. Why don't you give your neighbor a big high five? Why don't we sing a song as we close? <laughs>